Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another Pokemon challenge video. This week we will be revisiting Pokemon Emerald Kaizo. A load of people have been asking me to return to this game and I can see why. The first video I made on this game absolutely blow up, it's over 600,000 views right now and I can't thank you guys enough for the support on that video. So for the people that have no idea what Emerald Kaizo is, Emerald Kaizo is a ROM hack of Pokemon Emerald and it's basically 10 times harder than the normal Emerald. For example, the game does not allow you to use any items in battle, you also do not gain any EVs, while the opponents that you face always have max IVs and EVs. The encounter rate in this game has also been lowered down quite a bit so you have to run around in the grass a lot to eventually find a Pokemon. But now that I've returned, what am I actually going to do on the game? Well, I'll be running through it with bug type Pokemon only. Yeah, you've heard that right. The worst typing in Gen 3 is the bug type and I'm going to try and beat Emerald Kaizo with some very, very small and weak bugs. I personally did not think that this was possible, but you all have to find out and watch till the end to see how I do. Every single bug Pokemon is available in this game, so there's nothing that I can miss out on. And with that being said, let's get right into the rules of this challenge. Rule number one, of course, I can't use any items in battle, but the game doesn't allow you to use items, so it doesn't matter. Rule number two, I can't have any duplicates, so I can only use one Pokemon from each species. I will be able to use HM Slaves, and I can only use bug type Pokemon in battle, just like always. With that out of the way, don't forget to smash that like button, click that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already, and let's get right into it. Because I will be working with bugs the whole time, I called myself Bug Boy, even though in real life I don't even like bugs. Then I pick my starter, which is going to be Mudkip in this one, which I will be using as an HM Pokemon. And also because he will give us a load of luck. I call him not a bug because sadly enough I can't really use him as a bug type Pokemon now can I? Then I had to grind up my Mudkip up to level 7 so that I could beat May's Trico which I did very easily. Then I got some Pokeballs from May and now the real challenge begins. But before we get into any major battles I have to set up a team because I can get a load of bug type Pokemon early on already. So the first Pokemon I found was a Caterpie which I named Caterpie because ha <laughs> funny. Then I got myself a Wurmpull which was Phoebe Female, but even though I knew it was female, I still named it Hank. The next Pokemon I found was a Weedle, which I named Death after the Weedle in my bug type only run in Pokemon Fire Red. Then my Caterpie evolved into a Metapod at level 7. And I also caught myself a second Whirlpool to try and get Beautifly and thus Docs on the same team. But I also named him No because I wouldn't even use Beautifly on the team even if I got it. Hank then reached level 7 to evolve into a Cascoon. Weedle also reached level 7 to evolve into a Kakuna and after that I caught my last Pokemon on this route which was Lediba. And since it's the 5 star Pokemon, why not name it Star Me? No then reached level 7 to evolve into a Silcoon and after that I won a trainer battle which leveled my Kakuna up to level 10 so now I have myself a Beedrill. After that my Metapod also reached level 7 so that he would evolve into a Butterfree. After that I caught myself a Spinarak and I named it ah! Because that's the sound I make every time I see a spider in real life because I absolutely hate spiders. Once I reached the forest, I caught myself a Pineco, which is going to be very useful later on. I mean, Bug Steel is a very good typing. And then my Cascoon also evolved into a Dustox. And then we can finally get into the real first fight against Red. Because most of my bugs were already squashed from the trainers before this fight, this really wasn't that easy. His first Pokemon Eevee managed to take down my Butterfree because it was on very low HP and then I had to switch in Dust Dogs which eventually took down the EV with a load of Psybeams. Next up is Charmander so I decided to stay in and hit up with two Psybeams before we got taken out with an Ember and then I had to switch in my ace Pokemon at this moment, Beedrill. I managed to finish off the Charmander very easily with a Pin Missile then the Bulbasaur came out who I took down with two Pin Missiles and after that I learned Twin Needle which is an upgrade from Pin Missile. His last two Pokemon were Squirtle and Pikachu which I also took down very easily with some twin needles. I know that my team wasn't going to be able to take on a gym so I grinded them up just a little bit more and my Ledaba 
Roomba evolved into a Ledian at level 18. After this little grinding session, I thought I was going to be able to take down Roxanne first try, but I didn't really count her Relicant who literally sweeped half of my team. But now that my memory got refreshed a little bit, I was ready to take her on for the second time and this time it went way smoother. I knew that her first Pokemon would be Nose Pass, so I let with Dustlocks, which is one of my worst Pokemon on the team at the moment. I managed to do some decent damage with Psybeam, but eventually she switched out in the Lunatone and that Moon took me down with a rock in the face. So then I just switched in my Beedrill and I pin missiled away at it until it eventually went down because it didn't do any significant sort of damage against me. Next up was Lilip, who was an easy one-shot with Pin Missile. Next up was Anerith, and he managed to tank a Pin Missile, then hit me with a Rock Tomb, which lowered my speed, and then also hit me with a very big Aerial Ace, which did a lot of damage against my Beedrill, but we did take it down with two Pin Missiles eventually. Next up was the Waterfish Relicant, so I switched into my Spinarak to use a Toxin on him, and then use a load of Signal Beams until he healed up with his Berry. But eventually he managed to take me down, down, but the toxic damage kept on racking up so that took him down as well in the same turn. Next up was Shuckle and you all know how bulky Shuckle really is. So I switched into Beedrill, used a toxic on him to eventually stall him out and I also went ahead and used a twin needle which did some decent damage on him but eventually we got taken out by rollout. After he got down into the last half of his health he also had a healing berry on him so he healed up after that but after switching into Butterfree I was finally able to take him down. And her last Pokemon Nosepass then came out so I switched into my Pinico and started pin missling away but then he had another berry so he healed up to full health yet again. Luckily I managed to get it down into red health before my Pinico went down and then I could finish it off with my Lediba. Whew, that was hard and this was only the first gym badge. I don't think this is going to be possible. Next up was the fight with me but I'm going to have to cut out the easy battles in this run because else this video will be way too long. Long story short, she was a cakewalk and after the battle my Spinarak evolved into an area dose. Then I went to Mr. Branny and took his boat to Duford Town to face Brawly. His first Pokemon is a Hitmontop, so I decided to lead with Dustox and managed to take that thing down with just three Psybeams. Next up was Metatite, so I switched into Butterfree to take it down with a single Aerial Ace. Hitmonlee's defenses are very atrocious, so a single Aerial Ace took that thing down as well. Next was Hitmonchan, the last one of the Hitmon brothers, and he managed to tank an Aerial Ace and do some decent damage on me, but a second one managed to take him down. Next up was Polyrath, so I switched into Ledian to take that thing down with three Aerial Aces because it just decided to go for Mud Shot three times. Very big brain. Last up was the strongest Pokemon, Hari. Yama, so I stayed in once again, used an Aerial Ace, but then he took me down with a single Rock Tomb, so I switched into Ariados, who has learned Psychic by this point already, so an easy one shot with Psychic after that. This time I managed to get the Ice Puzzle in the first 50 minutes that I was playing, which is not too bad. Then I reached Steven, handed him the letter, and I traveled to Slayport City. Then I struggled at beating some Team Aqua Grunts in the museum, but eventually I beat them, and Archie came and he was like, No, you can't stop me from summoning Kyogre. And I was like, Yes, I can. And then he left. And next up, it was time for another May battle, which I aced with my very good book, Pokemans. And after that, I had to fight Wally with his level 70 Ralts, but it doesn't matter because he only uses Will O Wisp and Pain Split. So it was just some decent XP for Pineco. After that battle, I figured that Pineco was slacking a little bit, so I leveled him up to level 31 so that he would evolve into Fortress. And then the first real challenge of this run came, Watson. Even though he has an electric type gym, a lot of his Pokemon have fire type moves. For example, his Manactric has Flamethrower which does loads of damage and almost one-shots my entire team. His Ampharos has Fire Punch, his Electabuzz has Fire Punch. So you know how this is going. It's going great. But I already felt a little bit overleveled, so I wasn't going to overlevel anymore and just kept on trying. And eventually I was able to win at the round level 35. With the first Pokemon being Jolteon, I knew that it didn't have a fire move, so I let with Dust Dogs because it's pretty tanky. Then I just used Sludge Bomb twice to take out the Jolteon even though we almost fainted as well. Next up was Ampharos, and even though I managed to get up a Sludge Bomb and do some decent damage, a Fire Punch did take me out. So then I used Sludge Bomb to finish off the Ampharos, and after that I learned Drill Run, which is going to make this battle a lot easier. Next was Electabuzz, who hit me with a very hard-hitting, super effective Psychic, but a single Drill Run managed to take him out. 
Next it was my neck trick, but his Intimidate caused my Beedrill to not one-shot it with a Drill Run, and then we got taken out by two Flamethrowers. I knew that Ariados was going to be able to tank a Flamethrower, so he did, and I finished off the Manek trick with a Sludge Bomb, and next up was Lantern. So I switched into my Butterfree to use Stun Spore on him, as he then used a Thunder Wave on my Butterfree as well, so I had to switch into my Ledian because he knew Giga Drain. As I switched in, I got hit with a very big Thunderbolt, and then he went for a serve. But luckily on the last two turns he got fully paralyzed so my Ledian could finish him off with two more Giga Drains. Next up was Raichu so I switched back into Butterfree to try and paralyze it with a Stun Spore but he killed me with a Thunderbolt and he also got a Lumberry to heal the paralysis. So I switched into my Fortress, he hit me with a Thunderbolt which did a lot of damage, I went for a drill one which didn't quite take him out, he then went for a surf so I was left with 1 HP and 1 more drill run, 1 meter battle. If Fortress would have died there I probably would have lost this battle, so I can count myself lucky. After that we went to Mount Chimney to challenge Maxi which is one of the hardest fights in this entire game, but not quite the hardest. He has a Pokemon called Alakazam with Fire Punch which is really not that good for my team. And if that isn't enough, he also has a Crobat with Air Slash and Heat Wave, which one-shots my entire team at this level. So after doing about 50 attempts, I decided, no, this is not working, I have to grind up my team a little bit more. So I grinded them up to level 50, and I also replaced Butterfree with Parasect, because Parasect has access to Spore, a 100% accurate sleep move. With my level 50s, I went back to Maxi, and I failed again. The biggest problem on his team at the moment is his Crobat, because he can one-shot Fortress, he can one-shot Parasect, he can one-shot basically a lot of my Pokemon. So after another 50 attempts, I decided to grind up to level 55. <laughs> Hell, if I'm going to be level 55 by this point in the game, I'm not even gonna reach the 8th gym. But eventually, I was able to defeat Maxi. His first Pokémon is a Registeel, which my Fortress can deal with rather easily, because it doesn't really have any moves to hit it with. Even his explosion barely did any damage on me. Next up was his Alakazam, who my Beedrill can easily take out with an x Scissor while getting hit with a super effective Psychic. Next up was Claydol, who is also an easy one-shot with x Scissor. Next up was Houndoom, and I knew that Ledian was going to be the only Pokemon to be able to tank a hit from him, so I just used Air Slash a couple of times and I got enough flinches to take him down with my Ledian. Next up was Crobat, the one that always gives me the most problems in this battle, so I had to switch into Dustox because he could tank a hit as well. I use a Psychic which doesn't kill and then he takes me out with two Air Slashes. Then I go into Ariados which is also able to tank a hit and then I finish it off with a Psychic. Last up was his Dusclops who is a very annoying Pokemon because he likes to rest a lot and heal up fully. So I tried to use a Toxic to get him down that way but eventually my Ariados went down and I had to switch into my Beedrill. I just needed one more hit on him to take him down but then he used rest and I had to start over again. So then I kept on chipping down at him with Beedrill, eventually he healed up again but after that he didn't heal anymore and I was able to take him down and win myself the fight against Maxi. And now it's time for an ass whooping, literally an ass whooping. If you thought that Watson or Maxi were like very hard opponents, you haven't met Flannery yet. As you may know, bug types have a lot of weaknesses. One of them is fire, and this girl has a lot of fire. And I'm not even lying that I attempted this fight so many times that I had to go up to level 70 until I could eventually beat level 42 Pokemon. That is a 28 level difference to be able to beat the 4th gym. But eventually, eventually, after a lot of tries, I did manage to take down Flannery. The biggest problem was that my Beedrill couldn't outspeed most of their Pokemon, so I couldn't one-shot them with Drill Run, but now he can outspeed most of them. The first Pokemon Ninetales went down to a single Drill Run, just like his second Pokemon Castform, who also went down to a single Drill Run. 
Arcanine has the Intimidate ability, so I had to switch into my Parasect to take that, and I knew that Parasect was basically useless in this fight, so he went down to a single Heat Wave. Then I switched in Ledian to do some chip damage with Air Slash, so that my B Drill can finish it off later with a single Drill Run. Typhlosion went down the same way as the first two Pokemon with another Drill Run. But next it was Charizard, so I had to switch into Ariados to do a lot of damage with his Sludge Bomb, but then we got taken out by two Heat Waves, so I had to switch into Dustox after that to take down the Charizard with another Sludge Bomb. Last up was his Blaze again, and my Dust Dox managed to do a lot of damage with his Psychic, but a Blaze Kick still one-shots me from full health. So I had to switch in Beedrill once again to finish off the Blaze again with another Drill Run, and this fight was very hard, and I'm glad it's over. And then we traveled back to my dad to beat his ass, because with my level 70 Pokemon, he shouldn't be a problem at all. Even though that my Parasect is now level 70, he still couldn't take down a level 45 Kangaskhan. That's how good bug Pokemon are, kids. So I then switched into Starmie and finished that thing off with an Air Slash. Next up was Espeon, so I switched in Beedrill and took it down with an X Scissor while getting hit with a very hard Psychic. Next up was a Swellow, who my Fortress easily took down with a Flash Cannon, and after that was a Tauros, who did some decent damage with Earthquake on me, but two Flash Cannons killed the bull. Next up was Slacking, who did a load of damage with Earthquake on my Fortress, but I still managed to take him down with a few Flash Cannons. And that was that, we beat our dad, because we're way too over level for this fight, but we couldn't beat Flannery otherwise. And now I finally get access to a good team member, Scyther. I name him Savior because I think he's going to be the one that saves this run. After that, I cleared out the Weather Institute from Team Aqua and my Scyther evolved into a Scizor. Which at one side is very good because its defenses and attack go up, but at the other side it's really bad because he gets a lot slower as well. Then I had to do another rival fight with Mei, which was very easy, just like always. And after that, I looked in the grass to get myself a Pinsir, which is also a very good book type Pokemon that we can use at this moment in time. I named him Muscle Man because he's gonna be the muscle of the team. And then it was time for another ass beating by your girl Winona. She has the three legendary Birch, which isn't easy to fight against with a bunch of bug type Pokemon. But on one of my first attempts, I managed to get down to her first Pokemon Moltres, so I knew that it was possible at this level to beat her. So I went in again, and on the next try, I actually won against her. I started off with Muscle Man and Fortress to take down the Aerodactyl with a Rock Slide and a Flash Cannon, because Rock Slide hits both of the Pokemon, which is very good. Next up was Flygon, and I managed to get off one more Rock Slide before my Pinsir got taken out by a Flamethrower. For some reason, I then switched in my Parasect, the Zebdos went for a Sky Attack, I managed to survive, and it did a bunch of recoil damage as well. Fortress also managed to tank a Flamethrower from the Flygon and then take it out with a Flash Cannon. And then my Parasect took down the Zabdos with a Brick Break. The next two Pokemon were Moltres and Articuno. As my Parasect and Fortress went down, I had to switch in Scizor and Ledian. I hit an Air Slash on the Articuno with Ledian, but then he got taken out by a Sky Attack from the Moltres, and my Scizor managed to finish off the Articuno with a single Steel Wing. Then it was my last two Pokemon versus their last two Pokemon, Crobat and Moltres versus Beedrill and Scizor. My Beedrill managed to take down the Moltres with a Sludge Bomb, and my Scizor managed to get a critical hit with with double edge to take down the Crobat in a single hit, and that's the sixth gym badge in our pocket. Then I went to the top of Mount Pyre, which was one of the hardest things to do because you needed an acro bike at the start, and then you needed a mag bike, and I had to go back to switch bikes, of course. After that, I went down into the volcano in Mount Chimney and fought Maxi over there, which was also a very hard fight for me to beat. The two biggest problems on his team were Entei and Arcanine, because they could outspeed most of my Pokemon and then also one-shot them with Heat Wave or Fire Blast. And I also couldn't bring a full team of six Pokemon, because I had to bring an HM Pokemon to use Strength. And it also didn't help that the sun was up like all of the time and I don't have any weather changing moves. But eventually, after an hour or two of attempts, I finally managed to beat Maxi. By this point, I knew that he starts off with Tyranitar, so I led off with Scissor to take him down with two Steel Wings. Next was Executor, who had Chlorophyll, so he would outspeed my entire team, so I go into Beedrill and take him down with a single X Scissor. Next up was Flygon, so Ledian came out and killed it with a single Ice Punch. And next up was Arcanine, who I took down with a critical earthquake from Muscle Man. 
Next up was Entei and I had to get rid of the attack drop on Pinsir so I sacrificed Beedrill and then went back into Pinsir I got another critical earthquake to take down the Entei. And last up was a Gengar who I did some decent damage to with Pinsir with a rock slide but he took me down with a single fire punch then I switched into Scizor which was very dumb because he also got one shot by a single fire punch. And then finally I switched in Ledian to go for an air slash I got another critical hit to take down the Gengar and win the fight again. Against Maxi. I needed so many crits to win this fight, and I eventually got it. After that I went back to Lilikov City to fight my rival for one last time, and this time it wasn't anything different than the other times. She's really just a pushover, just like every single time I battle her. This is really a very easy rival to beat in this game. After that I went through the entire Team Aqua hideout, which really wasn't hard at all and the fight at the end was very easy too. And then it was time to take on Tate and Liza, finally! A gym where my Pokemon are good against. This shouldn't be too hard, right? The battle starts off with their Latios and Latias and I decided to start off with Scizor and Pinsir. I decided to double up on their Latias but a single Ixcezor wasn't able to finish it off and then they doubled up on my Scizor and then he died. I knew that Ledian could take a few hits from the Latias and Latios so I just used Ice Punch on Latias to take it out and my Pinsir took down the Latios with a single x -Scissor. The next two Pokemon were Medicham and Gardevoir and I used x -Scissor on the Gardevoir to take it down in one hit and an Air Slash on the Medicham which did some decent damage but then we got taken out by a Rock Tomb. The next Pokemon was Starmie and I went into Fortress because he could tank a load of hits so I used x -Scissor on the Starmie to one-shot it and my Fortress used Flash Cannon to finish off the Medicham and their last Pokemon was Chiraji. But these Chiraji had Fire Punch and took down my Fortress and my Earthquake wasn't able to finish it off in one hit so next turn my Beedrill had to finish this fight with an x -Scissor. We then did the fight together with Steven to beat up Maxi and his admin which was very easy, we didn't even lose once and then I did some diving in the C4 cavern and I stumbled upon this ice puzzle again where last time I got stuck for about two hours and this time it only took me about half an hour to get through it without a guide may I add. And then eventually I reached Kyogre and Archie and I challenged him to a battle. He starts off with a Raikou, yes, a legendary dog. And I led with Fortress because he has Drill Run and Raikou can't really touch me. Even though a Thunder get me down to 11 health, a single Drill Run took him down because I got a critical hit. Next up was Dragonite, so I switched in Muscle Man to go for a Rock Slide. I almost killed it, but then a Draco Meteor took me down and it also did a lot of recoil damage on him. Then I went into Starmie to finish off the Dragonite with an Ice Punch. His Suicune then came out and I stayed in with Ledian because I had Thunder Punch on him. I just tried to use a lot of thunder punches on the Suicune but she used Calm Mind a bunch of times which meant that thunder punch would do less damage every time I used it. Once I paralyzed him I spammed Giga Drain and then he used Rest so the paralysis was gone so I knew I had to go into thunder punching again. Eventually my Ledian got a crit which brought him down into red health and the next turn I could finish him off. Next up was Gyarados and I tried to stay in with Ledian and go for the Thunder Punch to paralyze but it didn't work out so he got taken out and I had to switch in Beedrill and took down the Metagross with two Drill Runs after getting hit with a very hard Rock Slide. Next up was Snorlax so I stayed in I went for a Sludge Bomb which did a load of damage but then he took me down with an Earthquake so I switched in Scizor to take him down with a Critical X Scissor and his last Pokemon was Waylord. I managed to get a critical hit again with x -Scissor, which brought him down into like 2 HP range but he went for water spout and the recoil damage took him out and also took me out but I still had an HM slave in my party so I won this battle. It was very close but I managed to do it. After that we do some talking with Maxi and Archie, we had to Sutopolis City, find that Kyogre and Groudon are fighting, we get Rayquaza from the Sky Pillar and make sure all this world ending shenanigans ends. After doing that together with Wallace it was time to actually challenge Wallace as well. He starts off with his Kingdra while I start off with my Scizor which is level 90 by this point. Point. He goes for two Octazookas which do a lot of damage but I'm left with 3 HP while I take down the Kingdra with two x -Scizors. Next up is Cast Room so I decide to go into Beedrill and take that thing down with two Sludge Bombs. Next up was my low take, so I stayed in and managed to tank a Surf on 12 HP and get off a Sludge Bomb and I also poisoned her but she had a Lumberry. Then I switched into my Ledian and took down the Milotic with a single Giga Drain. Ludicolo was an easy one shot with my Pinsir's X-Scissor and then I had to fight myself. 
Swampert. Luckily I still had Ledian on the team and I was very surprised that I didn't one shot the Swampert with a Giga Drain because it's 4 times super effective, so another one managed to take him down. Last up was Lapras and after spamming Giga Drain and Thunder Punch a few times I won my battle against Wallace, but after that I still have to fight Juan. Yes you heard it right, this gym has 2 gym leaders. For Juan you have to do a double battle with almost the same kinds of Pokemon. The battle with Wall starts off with him leading off Kingdra and Lapras and I lead off with Ledian and Scizor. I double up on Kingdra with Giga Drain and X Scizor but it doesn't quite do enough damage and they double up on Scizor to take him out. So after that Ledian finished off the Kingdra and, and Beedrill went for a Sludge Bomb on the Lapras. Castform came out next turn and I went for another Sludge Bomb on the Lapras and a Giga Drain on the Castform and next turn I was able to take down the Castform with another Giga Drain and Beedrill finished off the Lapras with a Sludge Bomb. His next two Pokemon were Lidicolo and Vaporeon and they took down my Beedrill next turn and then I switched in my Pinsir who tanked a Hydro Pump and I was able to get off a Giga Drain on the Vaporeon. Next turn the Hydro Pump missed luckily enough and then a Thunder Punch almost meant the end of Pinsir but luckily he survived, he took down the Ludicolo with an X Scissor and I was able to get off another Giga Drain on the Vaporeon. The turn after that Vaporeon took down Pinsir and his Lantern came out as well. Luckily Ledian took down the Vaporeon with another Giga Drain. Next turn my Pinsir got taken out and I only have my HP. Chem Pokemon and Ledian left, but I threw a Pokeball with Sharpedo so that it wouldn't really affect the fight because I had to take him with me to actually get to the gym because you have to use Surf. Luckily he got taken out immediately and a few more Giga Drains managed to finish off the Lantern and win me the battle. And now I finally get access to Waterfall which means that I can get myself my final Pokemon of the team, Heracross. Heracross has a lot of speed and attack so I think it's going to be a very good team member. I call it coolest because it's one of the coolest bug type Pokemon in my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite bug type Pokemon is. After that I went to Victory Road to fight Wally which is really not a hard battle at all. His team really sucks and yeah it's kind of like the rival battles I'm just gonna cut this one out. This time I remember that you can buy rare candies at the shop at the Pokemon League so I bought myself a bunch of them and leveled my entire team up to level 100. Since the Pokemon League also has level 100 Pokemon, I thought this was only fair. This is what the team is looking like right now. I think their stats are quite alright, not gonna lie. I mean, Scizor almost has 300 attack, which is a lot. But I still don't think we're going to be able to do this because... I don't think my Pokemon can outspeed anything. So I went up to Sydney and he was like... Get your ass out of here, boy! Because he had a Houndoom and an Alakazam, which literally outsped my entire team and killed me every single time with a Heat Wave or with a Fire Punch. I must have tried this fight over a hundred times, but it wasn't possible with the current team that I was working with. It would always be the same outcome. A Houndoom comes out and it's over. He would use Heat Wave on my entire team and I would be dead. So I gave it a little bit of thought and I knew that I could get a Ninjask and an Armaldo as well, which are actually better than most of the team members that I can get. So I got myself a Ninjask, which I named Fast AF because he's going to be able to outspeed that Houndoom. And I also went out of my way to grab the Claw Fossil and get myself an Anorith, which I of course leveled up to level 100 with all of the rare candies that I could buy now. And with these two new team members, I went back to Sydney. His first Pokemon Sableye went up against my Scizor and I can tell you he got lucky with that critical brick break because my Scizor took him down with three X Scissors. Next up was Alakazam so I switched into Ninjas because he could outspeed him and take him down with a single X Scissor. Next up was Machamp so I stayed in, my first Air Slash flinched him and my second one took him out. Then I switched in Lydian because Houndoom came out to take the Intimidate so that Armaldo didn't have that Intimidate on him. And then he got one shot by a Heatwave, I switched in Armaldo and I got very unlucky because he got burnt else my Ancient Power would have taken him out so Armaldo went down and I switched in Ninjas to finish off the Houndoom. Next was Jolteon but my Pinsir was able to take that thing down with a single Earthquake. And last up was Tauros who finished off my Pinsir so I switched in Heracross and took the bull down with a Brick Break. I managed to defeat Sydney, the first Elite Four member, farther than I thought that I would get. Now it's time for the second Elite Four member, Phoebe. She leads with Gengar as I lead with my Scizor and I use a Steel Wing which does a load of damage but 
then she uses Destiny Bond and I take her out together with me. Next is God of War, so I switch in Pinster, go for an X Scissor which one shots, but we also get hit with a very hard Fire Punch. Next up is Crobat, so I switch into Armaldo because he will resist the attacks that the Crobat throws at him, and luckily he was able to take that thing down with two Ancient Powers even though we got put to sleep. Next up is Ludicolo, so I switch in Heracross which is able to outspeed and take him down in a single Mega Horn. And then his Dusclops came out, so I switch into my Ledian and start Giga Draining away at it. Sadly enough, I'm not doing too much damage, so after I hit another Thunder Punch, we got taken out by a Shadow Ball. I switched in Pinsir because of the Intimidate, and then I started Earthquaking at it, but two Shadow Balls also took me down. Then I switched into my Ninjask, I went for a Shadow Ball, but it wasn't enough. He healed up with Rest and had a Lumberry, then set up a double team, but I got a critical Shadow Ball, and one more took down the Dusk. Clops. Her last Pokemon is Sableye, so I switch in Heracross, and after like 3 or 4 Mega Horns, he finally goes down because I got a critical hit and he kept on using Recover. That's two Elite Four members down. Time to go to Glacia. But sadly enough, this is where the run ends, boys and girls. I have tried this fight over 300 times. I have more than 3 hours of footage of me just running through her with different teams, different scenarios, different strategies. Strategies, I was not able to take down Glacia. There isn't a TM for double team in this game, so that is not an option. I tried a flash strategy where I use flash on her Pokemon to lower their accuracy, but it only has 5 PP in this game, so that didn't work either. I tried using Fortress instead of Ledian, I tried everything. It was not possible. The biggest problem was her Swampert, because he had Swift Swim and would outspeed my entire team, and he could one-shot me basically every single time because he had ancient power. The only member of my team that was able to outspeed was Ninjask and he wasn't able to one-shot him even if we got a crit. And the rest of her team was also very hard to take down and it is probably possible to win this with only bug Pokemon, but you would have to get multiple crits on the same Pokemon. Every single turn would have to be a critical hit or something, because else this fight is not possible. I personally thought that I would get stuck at Drake, because he has more fire type moves and such. But no, I couldn't even get past Glacia, sadly enough. If you are willing to try this challenge and you manage to beat Glacia, definitely send it to me on Twitter or Discord because I would love to see that, but I wasn't able to do it. So this is also the first challenge that I've ever failed in my entire YouTube career. Very nice. So I hope that answers your question about can you beat Pokemon Emerald Kaizo with only Bug-type Pokemon, one of my most requested challenges, and no, you cannot beat Emerald Kaizo with Bug-types only. I want to thank the people that support Support the channel via Patreon and memberships Mickey Googler, Felipe Morla, Ben Atril, and Kenzie Bunk. I want to thank you guys for watching, and as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.